Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all doing well. And today, well I've seen lots of questions on the channel regarding this and I thought it'd be an interesting idea to go sort of into a little bit of the behind the scenes of the reality and the, the truths of actually owning four cars. And it's not just four cars because ultimately that's not all that many, but they're four quite old cars that all require different types of attention. And so it does make for somewhat of a, a bit of a, uh, a job in itself. And I know um, Shmi150, Tim, talks about this a lot with his Shmuseum channel, and he obviously has a fleet worth vast amounts of money, uh, three or four times as many cars as I have, if not five. And of course, all of his points are far more relevant in that sense because he really does have challenges. But I do have challenges on my own with the four and thought it would be interesting to sort of talk about it a little bit. So. It's actually quite cold. I think while we've got the cars, or three of them, parked here, uh, I'll probably jump in the back of the 7 Series, it's the most comfortable, and um, talk about a few bits. Now, before we do, um, I'd like to say a word from today's sponsor. Now, if you are someone unlike me that needs more cars, or just wants another car, or wants a first car, then you'll be very interested in what I'm about to say. So let me say a big thank you to Lotify for sponsoring this video. They're an online giveaway company giving everything from iPhones to football tickets and now cars. And they very kindly brought this down to me today, which is a stunning 2012 BMW 1 Series, which is now available to buy tickets for to win. This could be on your driveway in just a matter of weeks. Whether you're looking for a first car or just something to run about in, I mean, I certainly wouldn't mind one of these. And of course, it could be yours. Make sure to click the link in the description then to go over to Lotify's website and get yourself some tickets for this one series, but you also might find some other stuff they're giving away on there, which is of interest to you as well. Hopefully in the future, there'll be some more cars and some really tasty stuff that will be up for grabs. So once again, thanks to Lotify for sponsoring this video. Now to the video. Okay, so the first point I wanted to, to mention is obviously, oh, it's quite dark in here. Hang on, let's just... Open my blinds. Never fails to get boring that. So Joel Morris commented on the last video, a great name by the way. Can you do a video on how you insure your cars? You look like a young chap and being insured on four, six, eight cylinder cars must cost you a lot. And that will lead me on to the first point nicely. By the way, if you've got a comment or something you want to ask, pop it in the box below. And in videos like this, I'll take the comment from the last video and, and answer it. But that brings me on to sort of the first point with uh, having four cars is obviously cost comes into it and that's probably the one that people are going to be most interested in now insurance Isn't all that bad might not be as bad as you think or it might be worse It depends what sort of end of the spectrum you are Insurance I must say depends largely. I mean wholly on Circumstances so where you live your driving history your job what you use the cars for who else uses the cars history of those people um, and age and size of engine are actually far less significant uh, than where you live, for example, but also the statistics on that particular car. So what I find, and I will tell you exactly what I pay in a minute, but what I find is that I do okay because the sort of cars I'm buying are cars that you wouldn't expect a 24 year old that I am now to drive. And it was even more the case back when I had my Z4 when I was 20. That was really not a car that many 20 year olds had. And so I found that insuring a three litre Z4 was very cheap in comparison to a Golf GTI, for example, three or four times cheaper. And that sort of carries with these. So this seven series, it's a six litre V12 car. You might think it's gonna cost thousands to insure for someone who's 23, or 23 when I bought it, but 24 now living in London. Uh, not true. Now that I've moved, it's slightly cheaper, but not by much. And this car is about £600 for the entire year to insure. Uh, I'd have to look at the exact numbers, but it's somewhere between six and 800 for the year to insure. Uh, might be a lot, might not be a lot, but to me, very, very reasonable considering it is a six litre V12. The Porsche is just about the most expensive, I think, to insure for the year. I would say that's probably because it is more likely that you have 24 year olds driving Porsche Boxsters, at least old ones. Uh, it does happen. And statistically, therefore, it's probably a car that has more claims against a younger driver, if that makes sense. So I think that is about 900 to 1,000 a year. The Range Rover are out 600 pounds a year to insure. 
and the Mercedes around 600 as well. So all in all, uh, we're looking at the region of just under, just under three grand, I think, or perhaps 750 per car. That's about what it was. In fact, I've recently uninsured the Mercedes because reasons we'll come into for this video, it's just not being used. It doesn't need to be insured right now. So that's uninsured, which has saved around 600 pounds off the whole premium. Uh, the way I insure my cars, they're all on a multi-car package. So they're all with one company. The company's called Diamond. They're a subsidiary of Admiral. It does say it's insurance for women, but they do insure men as well. Um, I'm not going to recommend them because I've never had to make a claim and your insurance company is, you only know how good they are when you have to make a claim. So I'm not going to recommend that you use them, but that is how I do it. I use Diamond and you can have, I don't know how many, but I've got my four cars on the same policy, which probably generate some savings. Then you've got things like tax. Um, luckily with all cars except the one I'm sitting in now being pre-2000 and I think it was five or six when the new tax regs came, they're all in the sort of 300 pound band. I think the Porsche and the Mercedes are 320 or 340 and same with the Range Rover. This is 580 or 590 or maybe even 600 for the year to insure. So again, if you add that up as a total, you've got 350 times three or so. That's 1050 and then this being 600, just over 1500 quid for the year to, in, to sorry, to tax all of the cars. Um, the Mercedes, I taxed monthly because when I bought that, it was, if you know the circumstances, it was really, really non-expected, wasn't planned. Uh, I didn't expect and I still don't expect to keep the car forever. So I tax that monthly just to save a bit of capital because otherwise I would have had to spend 300 quid or 180 quid in one hit to tax it for 12 or six months respectively. So doing it monthly, it's 27 pounds a month or something. So I've just got a bit more money left over. So that made more sense. The other ones I pay uh, outright, but then if I need to cancel them, you get the money back um, for the next month going forward that you haven't already paid for. So that's tax and insurance. They're two big ones. Fuel, it's not really uh, relevant because whether you have one car or 20 cars, you're only driving one at a time. So the fuel you put in it, it's sort of, you're not using more fuel by having more cars. You just, it's split between different cars, if that makes sense. Which brings me on to uh, my next point, which is you can only drive one car at a time. That is the truth of the matter. So again, whether you have one car or your Shmi and you have 20, 25 cars, the truth of the matter is you're only driving one at a time. Now there's rare occasions, of course, where you might do a road trip and you take several cars and actually having several cars has proven useful for me for various things, not only because they have different uses and they're good for different occasions, but for example, when the Range Rover was stranded in Wales, um, Katie and I, my girlfriend, were able to take this car and then just pick it up without having to arrange anyone else to give a lift or recovery. It, we could just do it ourselves. Uh, obviously then drove this up there, took the Range Rover back and just Katie followed me home in this BMW. So that was really handy. But ultimately, you know, you've got four cars. I'm only ever uh, driving one at a time. And that's a shame really, because, you know, they're just sitting there. There's always going to be three out of my four cars sitting redundant if I'm using one of them, which you have to bear in mind. Um, and I guess from a value perspective, now I wasn't gonna really go into money on this because I can't pretend to know anything about this sort of thing. I really don't, I really don't. Um, but in terms of value of the, say the Porsche, this BMW and the Range Rover, it's tricky, but certainly the Porsche, me sitting on this car, and that's not the plan, I do use it, and I'm gonna be using it a lot more actually over the coming months, but that sitting there isn't too much of a worry for me because the money that's in that car, I'm not losing any because it's not going down in value. In fact, as we push through the winter, if I keep it and, and then look to sell it in the spring, it'll probably be worth 10, 20% more because people are just generally looking to buy sports cars more in the spring, certainly convertibles with the weather improving. So. Uh, you have to bear in mind you've got three cars sitting doing nothing for for you um, in terms of usage but also in terms of my youtube channel because that is my job um, so these cars all generate income for me having said that though you don't need to be driving the cars such as with today's video to, to generate revenue now that's not a cop-out excuse actually and that's not why i'm sitting here um, i literally haven't got the time today unfortunately to go out in each of the cars and drive them this one's also developed a problem which I will bring on to another point in a moment. 
But yeah, actually having several cars, it's fine because I can use them all at the same time um, in terms of filming and, and generating uh, revenue, or I could film several videos in a day, which I rarely, rarely do, to be honest. So yeah, so that's my second point, I suppose. And then there's just a few other things to consider. So especially with these being for older cars, and this is the point I was making at the start, that it's maybe different to someone like Shmi, who generally buys brand new cars that will have service plans and sort of a very, uh, very, very unlikely that things will go wrong outside of their schedule. So, you know, they might be gone for an MOT and service every year at, at, at the minimum, uh, or maybe every couple of years for some of the cars. And that's sort of, you can schedule that into your diary, I suppose. These cars, um, being older, being without warranties, being without sort of service plans, it's all on me. And it's up to me to not only diagnose or notice when things are going wrong, but to obviously arrange them going in, which is always quite hard to book, especially at this time of year when it's busy. Then transporting them there, what I'm going to do with that day where I'm losing or whether I can get a lift back. It's quite complicated. Um, luckily, it doesn't go wrong all that often. But for example, this I'm trying to sell at the moment, this car, and there's some news coming on that soon. It will be, well, let's just say I'm going to be giving it away. That's all I'm going to say. But it has now just developed a level control failure, which means I'll show you a shot, but I think the air suspension at the back is basically a bit like this. Um, and it occasionally levels itself out, but then it just goes like that again. So whether it's the sensor or there's a bigger issue with the compressor, I don't know. But the, the point I'm making here is that the car, the 7 Series, has been faultless. I've done a lot in it this year. I've done, I don't know, 12, 13,000 miles, taken it to Germany, straight pipes. It's done a ton of stuff that you've probably and hopefully all seen and loved. But then the moment I go to sell it, um, well, should I say the moment that I've actually found a buyer and now develop some issues with the car. So is that gonna affect me in terms of the price I sell it for? Or does that mean I'm now gonna have to take it for maintenance that I wasn't budgeting for because I really, you know, one of the reasons for selling this car is I spent enough money on it. I don't really have more budget for this car and I want to move on to other things. So is that another thousand pounds that's going to be taken out of the budget for the next car to go on this to get it ready for sale and the time to do that and to book it in? I don't know and I don't know what I'm doing with my hands, but I feel like I'm doing a lot of explaining and I hope it's all making sense. And I hope it's all interesting, by the way. Please feel free to comment at any point to tell me to off if you're not finding this interesting. So yeah, so that's that was my point in that there's something always needs doing with one of the cars. Now, whether it's something that's gone wrong or if it's just, you know, I haven't used the Porsche for three weeks. So before I actually go in and drive it, I need to ultimately, and just to be really safe, because I do like to do my due diligence with these cars. I don't treat them like um, crap. I do like to look after them um, because it, they ultimately then look after me. But you know, three weeks I haven't driven that. Well, I'll need to check the tire pressures really to be safe, check the oil and the water after that sort of time. And then it'll be things like you drive around and there's no windscreen washer in it. And another thing is that things get lost between different cars. So for example, all of these have like their own USB um, cigarette port, you know, adapters. And occasionally I'll jump into this, be halfway down the motorway and realize I haven't got my Bluetooth dongle for my music or I haven't got my USB because it's in the Porsche. And, very, very small third world or first world problem, should I say, but annoying. And these are things that you don't really think about before having several cars. Um, very, very non-issue, to be honest. It's just one of those things you'll be driving along and you go, ah, oh, and that's about it. But yeah, there's all just little things, especially things like um, that car's got a few clothes in it. And the other day I was out in a different car, I can't remember, and I wanted a certain jacket. I thought it was in that car. It wasn't, it was in that car. And that's because I'd moved it the night before. And, you know, the list goes on really with things like that. You know, I've got tire, various tire pressure things and jump leads. So if I'm going out on a trip in one of the cars, I wanna make sure that I move the jump leads and the, you know, the tire pumps and things like that from, and all the tools from that car to the car I'm using. And occasionally, inherently, you forget. So that's sort of um, point number three or four. I, can't, I don't really know if there's a structure to this, but you can see where I'm going really. It's the logistics of it are the main thing that I'm getting at here. You know, having four cars, there's, there's quite a lot to think about just because of the legality things. And actually, if you want to use them, there's certain things that need to be in order. It's very different to when you've got one car uh, or maybe two and one that you use every day. Um, you just, I mean, I remember this when I said, I was always so on top of things with that because you're using it every day. So the most minute 
changes to something or a slight new noise, you identify issues very, very quickly and you um, are able to then get on top of them quicker. But also you know when things like oil and water and stuff need topping up because you just know how much you've been using the car. Now, when you haven't used the car for a few weeks, you, you can't remember what it sounded like last time you drove it. So <clears throat> you sort of have to start again every time. Same goes for, you know, the driving style of all these cars are so different, um, namely with the Porsche being a manual and the rest of them not. When you get in that, it's strange. And also my girlfriend's car, uh, as you'll see in the video, and I'll put a shot of it, I can't drive that at all. And it just feels so different to the Porsche in terms of the gearbox and actually almost crashed it into a curb this morning when moving it for this video. So yeah, so all of the cars are different. They all have different things and equipment in them and you're constantly having to move and you're constantly having to think about that needs that, that needs that, that needs that. But bear in mind, it's only four cars at the moment. They are, you know, I'm not using them. I don't rely on them with my life really. Um, and the Range Rover, from being honest, is my workhorse. That's the car I get in every day to, um, you know, go places that I need to go. And that's good because that is quite an unreliable car, but I'm able to keep on top of noises and issues because I'm using it all the time, if that makes sense. But on the face of it, I'm super lucky to have four cars because it does give me options, um, not just for YouTube content, of course, that's great. But to be honest, I love each and every one of my cars even the CLK, and we'll get onto the CLK in a minute because I, I mentioned that as, that's uninsured. Um, the Porsche, I honestly look at that every day and think, I wish I was driving that because it just looks so cool. You get in, it's got the blue leather and the sort of embroidered or the, uh, the crested Porsche logos. Um, and actually, I, I enjoy driving that every time because it is super special when I do. It's only at this time of year, maybe once a week. Um, the Range Rover I love, you know, I know that it gets really hot in there really quickly on a really cold day. The heated seat is aggressive. Uh, you get in there, you can drive it with a jacket, you can drive it with thick gloves because it's designed to, to be used that way. And you can just chuck it around in any sort of um, eventuality and it will take it. This sounds incredible. Every time I know I'm going to start it up, I get really giddy like a little kid because the cold start on this thing, as you've heard a hundred thousand times, is stupid. Um, and very loud and makes me very, very giddy inside. Probably doesn't make my neighbours very giddy, but pff, that's, that's a whole nother thing. And I'll just quickly touch on the fact that the Mercedes then isn't here. Uh, I haven't got any shots of it in this video unless they're old ones, um, because, well, a few reasons. Space is the main one. So I'm living now with my girlfriend in, as you can probably uh, ascertain as a cul-de-sac. There's not enough car parking spaces for my four cars. Bearing in mind, Katie, my girlfriend, has a car as well. A lovely Nissan Pixo. Actually, love that car. It's great. Um, so there's five cars, basically, between us at the moment. And the Mercedes, therefore, as it's not being used, is sat on my parents' driveway back in London. And because I'm not using it, it's uninsured. And I'll be untaxing and, and sawning it, actually, because it's just not being used. There are plans for that car, um, but because of, actually, the logistical things so I, I genuinely wanted to go and film with that car today because i've got some parts to fit with it but i just don't have time to drive the sort of two and a half three hour round trip to just go and film with that car i just don't have the time today uh or this week and it just won't work now with my other plans so yeah it's a bit of a logistical nightmare having cars split between different locations and of course anytime i want to go and pick a car up i'm then having to leave another one if you see what i mean so if i wanted to bring the mercedes back i'd either have to drag Katie out um, to come with me and drive me there and then, you know, convoy with me home or I'd have to take this BMW down, leave that there, bring the Mercedes. So it, it, it's a little bit of a nightmare, but I'm very grateful because I have all of these crazy choices and opportunities to do things with different cars. So yeah, the Mercedes is still here, but it's not here, if that makes sense. And there is still plans with that car. It's just things keep getting pushed back because I can't get to it and yeah, it gets a bit complicated, but I'm not complaining at all. I'm super fortunate to be in this position. And for the future, um, well, I'm not going to be here forever. We're hoping to go somewhere bigger. So in the future, I'm hoping to have a space for all these cars and, and, and more. I want to keep adding cars to my collection. I really don't call it a collection. It's not at all because they're all, they all have a use and a purpose and it's great. Um, and there's so many, so many weird and wacky cars that I'm yet to own that 
I will. And we just got to get a few of them shifted and have a little bit of a, a jiggle. And we'll have some new cars on the channel, which will be really exciting. But I do ultimately want to grow this in a way that I don't have to sell cars and I can just keep adding them and eventually have a barn somewhere with 200 boxes in. That would be that would be my ultimate dream. And we're working on it. So there's plans to, to add stuff to the collect. It's not a collection. There's, there's plans to buy more cars um, when I have some money. I mean, it's, all, it's always that's people will tell you different things. Money is essentially always the reason not to. Why, why, why else would you not buy more cars? So there's plans to do that. Um, BMW, like I say, we're working on getting that sold. Um, it sort of is sold, but it's going to be getting given away to you guys, which is really exciting. I can't wait to actually tell you more about that in the new year um, because you're essentially going to be able to win this car. The Porsche, don't want to get rid of that. I love that car. I really do. But I think if something comes up that I need to buy or really want to buy, the Porsche would be the next one to be sold. Range Rover, not going anywhere. I love that thing. If I do end up selling that, it will only be to buy a different one because I think, I think as long as I'm in the fortunate position where I can afford to run it, I'm going to always have a Range Rover. I'd like to keep this one for as long as possible. And I think it's actually quite mechanically sound, especially with those new wheels now. And Mercedes, as I mentioned, not here, not really being used. I miss that car. It looks great. It looks so cool. I'm yet to really drive it around with the roof down at all. It needs some mechanical sympathy. Um, but yeah, just, just not being used, but still sitting there. So that will probably be getting shifted in a sort of giveaway format as well. Hopefully next year at some point. Right, so time to end this video. I hope you found it interesting. I genuinely do quite enjoy talking about these topics and I'm always happy to be open and have a discussion. And yeah, I, I don't hide stuff really. So I'm very happy to talk about this kind of thing on the channel, on camera. Um, hopefully you guys enjoy this style of video. Do give the video a thumbs up actually if you did, because then I have a good indication of who likes it and who doesn't sort of thing. Comment below, of course, if you have more questions on any topic really, because as I said, I'm gonna try and integrate into videos a little bit more your comments directly and, and answer them. Uh, let me say a really big thank you to Lotify actually for sponsoring this video. The sponsorships, and, and I know you hear it all the time, but they, they do genuinely keep the channel going. Um, most of the time, YouTube revenue doesn't cover it at all. I mean, doesn't even cover it, let alone profit. So um, sponsors are really key. And, and so please do go ahead and check out their website. Um, go and get yourself a great deal because you can, you can get a really nice one series to run about in for just a few quid ultimately. So get yourself on the website, go and have a look. Um, and get yourself a, a free one series essentially. I know I would like to if I wasn't in the position where I already had four cars. Uh, but yeah, so big thanks to them. Do appreciate it a lot. Hopefully we'll see more of them going forward with some really cool giveaways actually. And so yeah, thank you guys for watching. Hope you found it interesting like I say. And I'm looking forward to actually getting out in the cars and driving them a bit more. Uh, bear with me, that is coming. The Range Rover we're taking off-roading this weekend as I'm filming this. So that's going to be a really fun video. Porsche, we're doing some interesting performance stuff with that as well. So thanks guys a lot. I will see you all very, very soon.